we talk about today? What what's today going to be? I got I got some notes of things that uh that we could talk about <clears throat> topics going on. Let me just look through. This is just going to be a tester episode at the moment cuz <clears throat> You know, we're getting things ready in the podcast studio. Um, Hopefully going to shoot some podcasts in here soon. This is our tester episode. We're going to see if I have a good podcast voice. We're going to see if I have a good podcast voice. I think I have a good podcast voice. Going to have to wait and see. Um, I did used to have a podcast with one of my friends back home called Mama's Boys. Might revamp that, might not. Not 100% sure. We'll see, but regardless, here we are. We're going to look at what's trending. We're going to, you know, we're going to talk about the shit. Someone just asked me if I want food from where. We'll see. All right, and this is how you know we're going to start. Ready? All right, welcome back to The Mackin Show, test episode number one um, in our podcast studio at the office. Uh, we've had this studio for a long time. I've wanted to reboot a podcast here for a long time, and I figured what better time now because they're in Texas at the moment. Um, we're just here. You know, still managing the content, day in the life of a social media manager slash coordinator slash photographer, videographer, helper. You know what? Everyone here wears so many hats. We do it all. Uh, everyone who works here is badass at what they do. They're awesome. So, you know, we're just going about the motions on a day like today, which is Tuesday. Um, it's been gloomy as shit in Los Angeles for what seems like months now. You know, like I've moved here from New York where we're used to gloom. We have like six months, six, seven months out of the year that are winter, let alone gloomy. It's winter there. So I figured, you know what? Everyone moves to L.A., you know, for the sunny and 75 all the time. It's like not a real world here. And I've been humbled. I've been very humbled. Like last year, we had our times last year where... It was gloomy, it was cold, but those were in the typical months. That was like from November to March, kind of, and those are skiing seasons. You know, you got Big Bear, you got Mammoth, you got places in California to get snow, of course, but Los Angeles, it snowed in Los Angeles this year, which is fucking crazy, but, you know, got another week of gloom. It's gloomy as hell today. Uh, It's about noon, and, you know, we figured might as well shoot a little tester episode, so that's what we're doing today. Um... Fresh off a Denver Nuggets championship win. Honestly, I'm excited for him. I'm not a Nuggets fan by heart, but I love the city of Denver. Uh, I got two of my best friends live in Denver. My brother's about to move to Denver. Um, Nuggets have never won a chip. Simple as that. Nuggets have never won a championship. Even with Melo, even with Melo and AI were there. They haven't had a team to necessarily do it. And one man, one seven foot one tall Serbian man who was drafted during a Quesarito Taco Bell commercial, decided, you know what? I'm going to give you the most impressive but uncaring championship ever. What I mean by that, impressive as hell, like 40-point triple-double. Yeah, what are you getting? Oh, where from? Ooh, cool. I'll I'll be on a little bit. Might be gone. Food might be gone. Um, So they... They ordered lunch. Didn't tell me. It's okay. Anywho, extremely impressive. Like, gave him a 40-point triple-double frequently, might I add, which is crazy. But regardless, Nikola Jokic is a monster, but just very clearly bored with the game of basketball. And quite quite literally to him, it is just a job. Like he said, and I quote, it is a job and most people don't like their job. Maybe some people like their job, but they're lying. And he's the common man superstar. Nikola Jokic is the common man superstar. He just wants to come into the NBA, do his job, 
and his job is, you know, 40 point triple doubles, might I add, and go home. Doesn't want any of the bullshit, doesn't want any of the celebration. He truthfully, at first, thought it was a shtick. I figured, like, oh, okay, he's just trying to be that guy. He doesn't give a fuck. Like, he misplaced his MVP trophy. He did not want to go to the, the amazing clip of him not wanting to go to the parade. Literally turns to his PR agent, like, when's the parade? Thursday. And he just goes, no. That was his reply. It was no. So I couldn't be happier that Denver won the uh, NBA championship this year. Like, I love the Miami Heat, too. Jimmy Butler's a dog. Like, shout out the Heat. But I just love Nikola Jokic. And I wanted a West team to win. We're on the West Coast now, so I figured, you know, I want a West team to win. Um, I would have loved it to be LeBron if – we do more episodes of this and we talk about it more. I'm a huge LeBron fan and used to be, I'm not anymore. Used to be a big KD hater because of his joining of the golden state warriors because fuck the golden state warriors, but I'm not a KD hater anymore. Shout out KD. Um, but no, I would have loved the Lakers to get to the championship, but Anthony Davis plays like six, seven games a year. And you know, LeBron's 38 now. Like, that's crazy, and he's still putting up 20-plus point games all the time, which is crazy. So that is our update on the NBA championship. I can't wait for next year. To be honest right now, I'm waiting for John Morant. I'm waiting to see what happens with him because Adam Silver was like, you know what, we don't know how this playoffs is going to do viewers-wise, which supposedly it did the best viewing NBA finals in the last five years, which is crazy. But he was like, you know what, I want to wait and – see what the outcome of the NBA Finals is. We don't want to overshadow it with this John Morant news because there's been recent developments. So clearly whatever those recent developments are, I'm guessing we won't see Ja for at least at least half a season. Ja's PR team came out and said that it was a toy gun, which they had four weeks to come up with something. And they came up with that it was a toy gun. So... Those friends need to be dished. The PR team needs to be dished because it was a toy gun is a horrible, like I've only been working in this industry for about two years now and I only do social media. I for sure could have came up with something better than it was a toy gun. So yeah, John needs to get rid of his PR team because like I I, I want to see you play basketball. And we're being honest, like, yeah, you're fucking up, making some mistakes, but, like, you're extremely good at basketball. So, like, and you're fun as hell to watch. So, obviously, I want you on the court. So, maybe just, like, dish the PR team. Maybe we can get you back. But, no, also in the basketball world, and I find this funny that people don't grasp this as much, is that the NIL world is getting some flack. And what I mean by that is the Cavender twins. Haley and Hannah Cavender, they were twin. Well, they, they are twins, but they did play on U Miami basketball team. And they made reportedly about $2 million in NIL money since, you know, gaining fame and being on the U Miami women's basketball team. And people are really mad at that. And this happened with Libby Dunn. You know, this happened with Suni Lee. Like, it happened with people where people were upset that, you know, good-looking athletes were getting good NIL money and better players weren't getting NIL money. But at this point, market yourself. Like, right, he's such a big prospect. Bronny James' NIL possibilities right now are like $7.5 million. And he's not on here posting every single day. And I get it. He's LeBron James' kid, so he has, like, a lot of help behind him in the posting way. But, like, he posts himself a lot doing shit and like highlights of himself and like he's joined phase. Like he's done a good job at just like keeping his name out there regardless on top of, I get it. He's LeBron James son, but like, I don't, I can't keep hearing the, Oh my God, like they're not good and they're good looking. So they're great. Of course. Like if you haven't came to the conclusion now that life is easier for attractive people in any realm, in any industry, business even fucking teaching i'm sure there was two teachers they were both as qualified one was very good looking one wasn't i'm sure the good looking teacher might get a better chance than the not and shout out teachers because 
they deal with some shit. But regardless, in any industry you go into, that's just going to happen, especially like NIL deals are literally brand deals in the entertainment industry. Like NIL was never created like, oh, you know, we're just like, this was specifically with crazy rules of like, you have to be just the perfect athlete. Like, no, NIL was so that, okay, this person has a lot of eyes on them. We want them, we want to give them money because they're going to get us money. That's what NIL is. Or we want to give them money so that they rep our school. That That's what NIL is. And yeah, obviously people who are very good at marketing themselves, regardless of what their looks are, are going to get a bigger NIL valuation. And the Cavender Twins are very good at marketing themselves. Livy Dunn is, ve- and she got rizzed up by Baby Gronk. We'll get to that a little later. Um, Livy Dunn is very good at marketing herself. So yes, of course. And for whatever reason, whether you want it to, oh, they just post their ass or they just do it. Who gives a fuck? At the end of the day, it comes down to one thing. They're very good at marketing themselves. That's it. So of course, yes, they're going to get a bigger payday because they're bringing more eyes to their shit than someone who might be better than them has 2000 followers on Instagram. Like I get it. Like at the end of the day, you guys getting mad at like the number one player is not getting the same value. Well, they're probably going to be in the WNBA, so they're going to be okay. Like, yeah, they're not getting NIL money, but like if they're truthfully like one of the best, they're going to go pro. Like going pro has nothing to do with like, do you have a social media following? Never has. Like, yes, they want you to like be a name. Like they want you to have good highlight tapes on yourself. They want you to be a good on okay. like, Cause there's, you know, it's a business. There's more that comes, but like, as long as you're good, you are going to get drafted. So at the end of the day, those whoever what ath- whatever athletes you're talking about that they're not getting as much money as the Cavender Twins or Libby Dunn, et cetera, if they're good and they're way better than these people, I'm sure they're going to be fine. So that's my take on that one. Shout out the Cavender Twins because they're doing it right. And supposedly they might join the WWE, which would be fire because the last two twins exited a little while ago, Nikki and Bella. Uh, they go by Garcia now, um, cause the WWE somehow owns their name. Don't know how the WWE can like, I mean, I get how, but I don't know why, how it can stick that it's like, yeah, your birth given name, like we own now. So like you can't use it for stuff. I get it. If it's just like, Oh, like you had a shoe deal. You can't wear these shoes anymore. Like whatever. But like, that's my name. Like I was born with that. Like, let me get it back. So that's crazy, but no, shout out the Cavender twins, shout out Libby Dunn, she got rizzed up by Baby Gronk. I have no other update other than that, she just got rizzed up by Baby Gronk, so there is that. Um, I'm trying to think what else, you know, Shannon Sharp left undisputed, and it was an emotional goodbye, and you know, I have been a Skip Bayless hater because he hates on LeBron James so much. And, like, he makes it – and he that's kind of something he's done very well. Like, he's been a huge LeBron James hater. I'm a huge LeBron James lover, so, of course, we're going to, you know, butt heads in terms of my liking of him. But Skip Bayless is extremely good at what he does. He's been able to – like, Stephen A. Smith has came out and said it, that, like, you know, Skip Bayless is the reason that his career was hoisted up. Shannon Sharp, same thing. Like, Skip Bayless is very good at – You know, like, being a great co-host, making great debates. Yes, they might get very heated at times, and he may be in the wrong, but, like, he seems like he's a very good person to do a show with. So I have no doubt that whoever the next co-host of Undisputed is going to make it great. I just hope there isn't as entertaining as Shannon. And Shannon's going to be fine, whatever. I just hope, it's kind of funny as I'm sitting here doing this, I hope he doesn't go the podcast route. I hope he stays doing some sort of, like, talk show because I feel like he'll do very well. And maybe even if he gets another co-host, that'd be fire. Um, I don't want, I know this is weird. This might be an unpopular opinion. I don't want him to go to first take cause you already got Stephen A who's blah, 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 like just babbling on about shit. And I fucking love Stephen A Smith, but just like babbling on about shit. You got Molly and you know, so they have like a, a thing. So it's just like, adding Shannon, it would just get so much talking over and stuff like that. I want Shannon to go maybe do his own thing and either do it by himself or bring on another co-host. Uh, I think that would be super funny slash awesome. So no, he left undisputed. 
you did it for like seven years um i fucking love that show like that was a show that either a i watched or b like you know if i had something i had to do school work 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 and i was at home like i would just have that on in the background or i'd like actually watch it so he was crying about it because i get it it's sad but he departed undisputed so shit's about to be disputed that wasn't funny but whatever um, ooh, Matt Reif is taking over the comedy game and he's fucking beautiful. So if you don't know who Matt Reif is, then I'm sure you're living under a rock at the moment. Cause Matt Reif is definitely the new hot thing in comedy. He's just this beautiful dude. He does great crowd work. Um, I originally found out who he was through Instagram and I'm sure that's how a lot of people found out who he was too, because you know, his videos just started getting a ton of traction on Instagram and TikTok of just like his stand up. And he does such a different stand up than normal, where, and like it's almost to me, takes a little, I won't say more talent, because obviously, like, you know, comedians that come up with a script and stories and everything, extremely talented. But like, what he does is crazy because doing crowd work is almost 100% improv. Because you don't know what someone's going to say back to you. You don't know the question you ask, what reply you're going to get. So you have to come up with everything you want to say to them on the spot. And that's what most of his set is. Is like, of course, that'll go on to him rambling about other conversations and shit. But it's all crowd work. And he's just like super good at it. On top of his crowd is mostly women and gay dudes because he's super attractive so, like, that helps, too, that he's going to sell the fuck out. So, I want to go to one of his shows because I've heard that he's, like, really good live. And I would love to just, like, see what he's like live and going to comedy shows. is so fucking fun. But he's going to keep killing it. And that goes back to, I mean, funny enough, it goes back to usually in the comedy game, it seems like it's different than the NIL game. Because don't get me wrong. There's, you know, I'm not saying comedians are ugly. Like, I'm not saying Kevin Hart, Dave Chappelle, Chris Rock. Bill Burr, I'm not saying they're ugly dudes, but just like Matt Reif is hot. Like Matt Reif is a hot dude. Yeah. Like that's it. So it's just like usually I feel like that's a unicorn. Mm. My voice has been doing that a lot lately. Like, usually that's like a unicorn. Like you don't see that a lot, at least in the comedy game, in my opinion, of someone just being really fucking hot and doing it. Even in the female comedy game, you just don't see it in the, at least in my opinion, maybe. Maybe I'm not watching the right comedians. Maybe you guys know people that I don't. But I just don't see hot comedians like that. So he's gotten taken over. He just announced his world tour with fucking Ashton Kutcher. He's not going on the tour, but like the announcement video was super cool. And it had Ashton Kutcher and Mila Kunis. Like, what? It's fucking awesome. Like, How do you know Ashton Kutcher and Mila Kunis? I would love to dive in to where that started because I feel like that's such a random person to just randomly DM like, Hey, like I'm doing this announcement video. I'd love for you to star in it. I know that's how stuff works, but like they have, they have to know each other. Right. At least in my opinion, that's what I think. So, you know, that's just what I'm thinking that they know each other. So hopefully that, you know, I want to fucking know that Matt Rife. How do you know Ashton Kutcher? You are two beautiful people and two beautiful people. Like, I want to know how you guys, got connected because that seems cool and if you guys want like a non-beautiful person to join your friendship like i'm down so you know shout out matt rife he's going crazy um ooh, demi lovato is done using the they and them because she got tired of it and don't really know what to say about that because i can't say i don't know if me saying that's fucked up is fucked up or if me saying I get it is fucked up. So it's just fucked up. But I will say it was very predictable that this would be the outcome of her using they, them. And I fuck with Demi Lovato. Like, hell yeah. Camp Rock. Like, she's dope. So like, no, obviously disrespect to Demi. But I just feel like this was definitely an outcome that I saw coming. Because it's just Demi Lovato. She just seems like, you know, that type to get tired. Like, make a stance on something and then get tired of it. 
you know? Sort of like how Vanessa Hudgens, she's like, you know what? People are going to die. It's whatever about COVID. And then she felt bad. So I get it. And I love Vanessa Hudgens too. So yeah, there's that. Um, trying to think what else is going on. Oh, I want to know. And this is just for something. Who, whoever's watching this, even if like five of you are watching this, who do you guys think, because we had this debate, has the top three most powerful fan bases on in America? I don't say planet Earth because I can't account for other countries per se. But my top three were Taylor Swift, Selena Gomez, and Donald Trump. And I know those are... But that that third name doesn't really fit with the two, but in terms of fan bases, I want to know, like, who do you guys think? Because I always hear, you know, Beehive. I hear Rihanna. Ariana Grande stands are kind of crazy. There's Beliebers. Like, I want to know who do you guys think has the most powerful fan base. Like, put it in perspective like this. Taylor's at number one, no doubt. Like, I know people think MAGA people, like, are powerful and crazy. Taylor Swift... And her fan base, not even Taylor Swift, her fan base made the price of eggs drop nationally. And it was only by like three cents or something like that. But just think about that. Like her fan base literally affected the economy in a positive way, but affected the economy. And she's just a country stuff, pop star. That's fucking ridiculous. Like, again, I get it. It wasn't by, you know, it's not like, you know, they made. I have faith that Taylor Swift's fan base could be more powerful than any stockbroker. If Tana, or Tana, if Taylor Swift's fan base wanted to crash the stock market, like if they really wanted to crash the stock market, like say, you know, Amazon came out with some hate speech against Taylor Swift like some hate speech, I have a feeling Taylor Swift's fan base could absolutely plummet the stock of Amazon. And I know that's a bold take. I understand that. But I think so. So I think Taylor has it on fucking lock. It's a cult. For sure. And I mean, not, you know, I don't think every cult's bad. I'm not sure. I know most aren't good. If anyone knows of like a good cult out there, let me know. But I know Taylor Swift's fan base is for sure a cult. Like, they have a whole union. So, you know, that's just my opinion on Taylor Swift's fan base. I think they're fucking awesome. I'm going to the concert in August. August 3rd, we're going to the SoFi concert. I'm fucking hyped because, I don't know, I think Gracie Abrams is opening up, or at least, like, on the tour, too. I don't know any of her music. But, you know, I wouldn't say I'm as... You know, a huge, like, I know every Taylor song. But I know a lot of Taylor songs. Fuck with Taylor Swift heavy. She's awesome. She's from close to my hometown, at least. She's not from upstate New York. She's from, like, outskirts Pennsylvania. I think she grew up, like, two, two and a half hours away from where I lived. So, you know, neighbor neighbor pride. So, love that. Shout out Taylor Swift. Um, Just on the screen right here, I'm just thinking of... There's just a picture of Tom Holland. Shout out Tom Holland, too, and Spider-Man. Because... Tom Holland and Spider-Man are fucking dope. And they're the same person. Uh, I want to find more shit to talk about, you know? Because might as well. Let's see. Ooh, the new season of the Kardashians are out. And, I mean, it's been out for a little bit. But you guys know how I feel about the Kardashians. So, I know this is going to be a bold take. Not from a business standpoint, but from the show social media standpoint. I think they need a rebrand or at least to like switch something up because the show just isn't the same, you know, the social media. I mean, they're still obviously followed by 300 million people getting millions. I'm not saying that because there's certain people like they fell off. They're never going to fucking fall off. Like, come on now. Like that's, that's America's Royal family. Regardless if you want to believe it or not, like the Kardashians are America's Royal family, but 
just from the show standpoint, still great, like still fun to watch. Like they're doing a ton of stuff, but it's just not what it used to be. Obviously they're older, you know, they have their own children, you know, they have businesses to run and stuff, but it just doesn't seem the same. So I kind of just, you know, maybe they should just tie into, you know, we're just going to be CEOs right now and, and just do social media shit. I mean, they're not losing anything from doing the show. Obviously like, you know, maybe some mental stability, but like, cause you know, filming a reality show is probably fucking tough, but yeah, like, Chloe, Do- or, I was gonna say Dolce & Gabbana, Chloe, like, Good American doing fucking amazing, Kim with Skin, like, crazy, Courtney even with Lemmy, Kylie with, uh, Kylie Cosmetics, and even Kendall with 818, like, each of them, I know Skims and Good American and Kylie Cosmetics are kind of, like, the poster child, like, those are the very successful ones, but Lemmy and 818, like, still do good, so it's, like, they're going to be fine in the business world too. I would even like cool shit developed around like their businesses, like cool, like what they, I don't know. I wouldn't have an answer for that, but no, the show just seems different. And like for a good reason, I understand why it's different, but it just seems different. Um, but shout out to the fucking Kardashians, man. Like I was thinking about it that, you know, they've been killing shit since like 2004, 2005. Like, the second Keeping Up With The Kardashians fucking aired, it was go time. Like, that show just, like, took the fuck off. Um, like, a funny clip came up the other day of uh, Kim being, uh, like, the number two some. I forget what it was. But she's like, oh, I'm the number two something. And Courtney was like, yeah, New York Post said you're the number one dumbest celebrity. And Kim was like, at least I'm number one and at least they're talking about me. And, like... That ideology is why they're a billion-dollar family. Like, they're so fucking smart. So, no, shout-out to the Kardashians family. If you guys never need, like, a dog walker or, you know, personal assistant, whatever it may be, hit my line. I'm here. Um, But, no, shout-out to the Kardashian family. And, yeah, I can't wait to see what the rest of season 22 goes. Um, Ooh, Conor McGregor has been accused of raping a woman at Game 4 of the NBA Finals. Like, that just just came up. Damn. Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I don't know really what to make of that. Like, he's denied the allegations, obviously. Um, I love Conor McGregor, so I'm really hoping that it's not true. I'm hoping that it's not even the realm of true, where it was like, whatever. So, I hope that's fake, because... I know he pisses a lot of people off. I know he can be arrogant, but just like, if you really like, if you watch his documentary or kind of see his upbringing, I really fuck with Conor McGregor. Cause like he really came from shit, hard ass worker. I get it. He's been a little wild. I get it. He can be arrogant as fuck, but yeah, I don't know. I like Conor McGregor. So I'm really hoping that that's not true. Um, yeah, he was out and about. And so, yeah. And that was right after he got in trouble for beating the shit out of their mascot. That would just be a double bad night. So I guess we'll update on that soon. Um, but yeah, I hope that's not true. And I'm trying to think, ending on a good note. Fucking. Yeah, honestly. I just wanted to make this mock episode. And yeah, I want to talk about fun topics, pop culture shit, sports stuff, entertainment stuff, business stuff. Stuff that I'm not knowledgeable on because I feel like that's super fun to talk about because then you learn about shit when people come in. I want to have guests and I want to ask them fucking questions and get to know their life. And yeah, and we're going to probably like in the future, like I want to make fun segments. I want, you know, I want this to be really cool. Like I feel like this podcast could be awesome. Names will be pending, but for right now we're going to call it the Mackin Show. You know, my middle name is Mackin. Um, and